Hi friends with Robots, Team Indiana here with our first major update uh, for our Robot in 3 Days 2015 build. We're really excited with the Recycle Rush game. So we did a, fr uh, a couple quick things after we read the manual. As I said a lot in the kickoff video, really have to remember to read the manual. Um, so without further ado, we started uh, by kind of creating a field map here. This is our side of the field. So you can kind of look at where game pieces start and then we've got some measurements on here just to kind of give us a really good understanding of what was going to be going on for the game. Once we kind of got that figured out, we moved over to start to figure out where all the points would be scored throughout the gameplay. So we started with the Thomas points. We kind of figured out there's four major elements, um, four major tasks that you can do during autonomous mode. Of those tasks, we figured out that there's a maximum autonomous score of 38 points. So this is all three robots working together doing a lot of stuff in collaboration. And that's a pretty cool score. So we moved on to our teleop points and here there's a lot more variables, there's a lot more game pieces in play and so here the coming up with a max score is a little bit you know tougher um, but we have kind of maximums for each individual point scoring object um, and so that gave us a teleop max of 402 points. So from that we have a game total of 440 points now this is a maximum possible score. Really highly unlikely that this will happen at tournaments, you know, kind of across the country or throughout the world. Might happen at championships, might happen at IRI. So then uh, the next thing that we do is we looked at how teams are gonna be ranked during qualification. Uh, so this is really, really important. You know, some of the things that you do have control over is your final rank, you know, how well you play that portion of the game along with how well you score points during the match. So the things that, you know, you're first ranked on your average match score for your alliance, then you're ranked on the sum total of your co-op points, after that you're ranked on the sum total of your autonomous points. And each one of these has a maximum. So you'd, ideally you'd like to try to max out each of those categories every single match to try to seed as high as you possibly can. We also looked at the elimination tournament bracket because that's changed this year too. So teams, you know, again, go through, read the manual, read that part of it very carefully. Um, really make sure you understand how the elimination bracket uh, works. So we got a lot of understanding. We did a lot of good work um, to kind of understand how the game was going to be, you know, played and, and how the points are going to be scored this year. Um, so with that, uh, we started making some start and end points for all of the game pieces and also a priority list for the different tasks and the different styles of robots that we're going to see. So for that, we're going to head over to whiteboard number two and we'll catch up. So first thing that we did is we looked at where each game piece starts and stops and what the point values are associated with that. Because again, we started with autonomous uh, and so we looked at each point, uh, each scoring object uh, and the different places that it could start. So we looked at you know the, the yellow totes, those can either start uh, right in front of your driver's station wall on the field, or you can actually hold those off and keep them for your human player load. So we did how that would inf impact what different things, you know, happen, how the match flow would be impacted by that. So one of the other big factors that we looked at was what tasks that we could do our portion of or versus what tasks we could do all of. You know, if we could grab all three recycling containers or all three yellow totes, stacking those or moving those into the auto zone. So those are uh, a number of different things that we took a look at. Um, then we kind of moved into our teleop analysis, and here we looked at a, what a robot would need to do for a four tote stack with a container on top and a pool noodle inside. And we looked at all of the different you know, places that those game pieces would start and end, and what the gameplay would be affected by those. And we kind of found that if you do those things, four totes with a container and a noodle on top, that would be a 38 point stack. And we figured that would be pretty good points in most tournaments and most matches. So then we also um, did another look for the co-op points uh, and where those game pieces started and stopped. And so we could look at how uh, the co-op bins would affect total gameplay. Again, because that's our second sort in the qualification rank, so those points are going to be very, very valuable. From this, we kind of figured out that there were two major concepts of robots. One most typically manipulating the totes and the other most typically manipulating the recycling canisters. And so from each of these we made a priority list of all of the different functions that those, each of those robots would need. Uh, and then we kind of had a big team discussion if we thought, you know, which one would be better if we thought we should do both, if we, should, if we should do one or the other. Uh, and for uh, the reasons that we're going to talk about in our strategy video, uh, you'll see we made the decision to go with 
a, uh, a tote stacking robot, and that's gonna be the primary function for our robot, for the Team Indiana robot in three days. Thanks guys, and we'll see you next time. Good afternoon teams. Uh, we so have a correction to make on Danny, and we're also giving him a yellow card. Uh, for our autonomous points, uh, we had counted it as 26 points. It is indeed 20. Uh, a stack set does not also count the tote set bonus. So our auto max and our game max change uh, by six points, and that is per rule 3.1.2.1. Thank you.